Hello, Danny Powell here, president of the Harlan Song Network. Each month, the Harlan Song Network showcases an artist of the month from the Harlan region. For the month of July, that artist is A.Y. Young. A.Y. Young is a young artist from Kansas City, Missouri, who is not only a songwriter but an, and a musician, but has been recently selected as the United Nation Young Leader for Sustainable Goals. I recently sat down with A.Y. and had a conversation about his music and his position with the United Nations and the Battery Tour. And thank you, A.Y., for being with us. And uh, Brian Nicholas, we're here today and, and uh, wanted to kind of get some background on you, A.Y., and talk yes, about your projects with Brian and that type of thing. Uh, what I'd like to start out with is is a question to you, which we go to all of our artists of the month is talk, tell me about your, how you got into music, how your, your music DNA, where you started and, and uh, how that all came nice. about. Nice, music DNA, I like that. <laughs> oh, shoot. Uh, yo, like, you know, it's interesting, like, I didn't, I wasn't one of those people that, like, started music when they were three or four or something. Like, it really, I, I really didn't start music until I was, like, 17, 18. Like, w what I did do, though, is like, I wrote about, like, what I saw, you know, and, like, you know, in Kansas City, you know, I lived on 39th Street, you know, back then it was, like, the divider line between the Bloods and the Crips, there was, like, a lot of crime, it mm -hmm. was crazy, it's, it's, everyone listens and hears about, oh, Truce and Paseo is bad, right? Mm -hmm. It was back then when it was bad. You know, and you would drive, you know, you could be on 39th Street, you could drive three, four blocks, it felt like, and then, oh my God, I'm at the plaza, and it's beautiful, and it's nice, and, and you know, the uh, the colors would stay the same as far as, like, the world, but then, like, the races would change almost. Like, it was like, oh my God, it's white people. Like, there was, like, no white people, you know, back then where I lived, like, and I was homeschooled, so, like, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I wrote about that. Like, the first thing I wrote was, like, ain't it funny how you can be in the hood one minute, drive a couple of blocks, it's like a chameleon hit it. You know, the colors stay the same, but the races change. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I just remember there was a point in time my brother had picked up the guitar and he was playing something, and I, I, I said stuff to it. I guess it was rap. I didn't know what rap was because I was homeschooled, and my mom wouldn't let me listen to secular music. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I didn't even really know what that was. <laughs> but, uh uh, yeah, it was you know that's how I started. I started doing music to like a live instrument and and, and just picked it from there. Picked it I up see, there. and it just grew from there. And now now you're into it full time. Uh, I'd like to be like, oh yeah, it just grew and it blew up. <laughs> yeah. But but really, I looked at music and I looked at life as like you know I believe in this thing called ten thousand hours. Uh -huh. Right, and it's like you had a match, you have been 10,000 hours. So, just like I was doing at the time, you know, I played basketball, you know, I got a scholarship, went to UMKC. You know, I was a rule, I'm Kansas City through and through. Mm -hmm. But even with the basketball, it was like I would, you know, do 500 shots in the morning on the gun and 500 in the evening. You know, I would look at allocation of time and be like, okay, so I could spend my time chasing relationships and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. But then I'd be good at that, uh, but I might not be good at what my passion is or what I love. So when it came to music and I and I you know figured that passion was you know it's real strong I was like okay let me put the time in. Mm -hmm. So I mean I would do like 6 hour performances in front of a mirror mm -hmm. thinking that I'm performing in front of 10,000 people every day every single day Monday mm -hmm. through Friday Monday through Sunday you know doing it and and working on my craft you I know? see. That's what got me. I see. Well, we're, we're, uh, we have that in common. I'm a Rue also. Oh, what's <laughs> up? We got around where we're Brian's at, though. I don't know. No Rue. He's not a Rue. You can tell yeah, you did. I'm thing. a Rue also. <laughs> well, well tell, me, tell me how you got started in, in doing the, the battery tour, yeah. how that all came about and, and what your thoughts were. I mean, it's a very, uh, very unique and a significant thing that has taken you to a, a great place so far yeah man it's it's it's, it's been a long journey because uh -huh. sometimes i go wow it's almost been 10 years uh -huh. i well i got out this tv show called x factor you know and i got four yeses from the celebrity judges like britney spears ellie reed demi lovato you know, those were mentors and and bless 
Brittany's heart because there's so much stuff I keep hearing about and I get her more now mm -hmm. if you've ever checked out what's happening with Brittany but I got off the show and I just wanted yes. to say hey to the world I wanted people to hear my music and you know I would you know try to perform around town and or, or even if, if a major artist was coming in to the Midland or this venue or that place you know try to open up and I would just get hit with you know well, how many followers do you have you right. know right. or how many tickets is your last right. tour and, and that's when I was just like okay well screw this man like I want to be like Ed Sheeran. I want to be like Andy Grammer. These guys are doing shows like every day. Like, why can't we do what we love to do every day? Like, why? You know, and then I just obsessed over it. I was like, okay, well, how do I do a concert anywhere? Like, anytime. Mm -hmm. And I obsessed over energy. You know, and that's when I found out, oh, shoot, energy is a base resource. We need energy in our food. We, we all need energy. And if you store enough freaking energy, you can power anything. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I started doing. Really? Yeah. Started storing energy in batteries and started. And, and, yeah. and at the beginning, it wasn't called battery tour. You know, I'd be performing. I'm like, you know, doing the song "Say Hey" was my single at the time. And you know, this is my song "Say Hey," and and this is the battery tour because I saw back. Uh -huh. And then people would donate. You know, in Kansas City, oh man, here's ten dollars, bro. You're so good at Prince and Michael. Duh. You know, here's five bucks. We're your outlets. We power the tour. Right. And I was like, that was my eureka moment of like, oh shoot, you're right. She's now you. Everyone in the world is an outlet for change, you know, mm -hmm. and plugged into each other on the local, the national level, you know, we can do anything, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and that's, that's kind of how the battery tour is born, me recognizing everyone's an outlet, and I'm like, okay, music is the vehicle to get the whole world plugged mm -hmm. in. That's really, that's very cool. Very cool. That's what I started doing. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and that kind of brought you to a place where I, I saw where uh, Paul Hawken nominated you for the for United Nations, and that's oh, uh, that's a very very unique and very powerful place to be. Be one of the seventeen that's a in the world. Yeah, that's a that's you know trying to get the world plugged in, doing all these concerts, you know, doing eight, I'm doing eight to 10 hour shows, traveling America, you know, right. taking that tip money going from city to city. That's when I recognize that there is an issue. And the issue is, most people don't know, is there's over a billion people that don't have energy in general. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm rolling into towns in Kansas and Missouri and New York, you know, that might not have internet sometimes, or, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you know, some of these flatland places, mm -hmm. you know, services not having it. And that's when I realized, oh shoot, we're everyone's an outlet i should build something to get them plugged in literally mm -hmm. you know not just bring and uh you know started getting people access to energy using the concerts to raise money to send people access to energy around the world mm -hmm. that transformed into a couple of years back like going to new york and, and participating in this climate climate week new york mm -hmm. has this huge climate week for everyone in the world and that was a turning point that was right before i met paul i met al gore I shook his mm -hmm. hand you know and was saying and he was talking and saying good stuff and i you know i look behind him and, you know and he's got this huge stage like sprint center size you know t-mobile center in kansas city now and that's when i told al i was like yo man you should be powered by a battery tour tomorrow Right, like, because mm -hmm. he's like, you know, because he's t talking about saving the world, right. but technically that's yeah. fossil fuel. Right. And I'm looking at my phone, and they're talking about this girl named Greta Thunberg, you know, this leader, right. you right. know. And I, I saw her come, you know, she, oh my God, greatest coming to America on a boat, you know, ah, oh, the boat, everybody was going crazy, you know? and I looked behind when she was talking, you know, and, and there's a, a, a diesel generator, you know, mm -hmm. and I was like, well, she's talking about saving the world while destroying it. Yeah. Why is she not powered by? Right. And so, again, I had that same notion of like, I right, screw this, man. Like, I'm going to freaking power speeches and panels. Like, I'm going to. So I went to, you know, Paul Hawkins, Project Drawdown and EarthX and Four Ocean. I was just like, hey, if y'all going to talk about saving the world, you, you should, you know, at least power it, you know, renewable. And that's what got me into the U.N. And next thing I know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm showcasing the battery tour to some mm -hmm. world leaders. And, and you know, and, and I think that was the first step. Meeting Paul Hawken, nomination happened, and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden I wake up and I'm like one of the 17 leaders of the world, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, holy crap! Yeah, huh? Huh? Well, that's, yeah. that's wonderful. I mean, huh? it's uh, it's an amazing thing, and of course, climate is is today, man. It's it's an issue. Climate change is real, and uh, what you're doing is is giving people opportunity i mean at, at at a small grassroots level to even create something and and uh 
power themselves. And it's a it's a wonderful thing. And that you know, and that's taking you to President Biden's inauguration and you know Last to do that. <laughs> and, 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 that was so special, you know, meeting and, and even seeing a collection of people like Garth Brooks. Right. Uh, Amanda Gorman. You know, right. Garth Brooks I'm a huge fan of and, and kind of put together the the uh, track 15 for project 17 with right. with with garth and mine or, or lady gaga mm -hmm. you know that was crazy being there with like everyone seems to have sold like millions of records and right. uh, here i am from kansas city yeah and, <laughs> and let's talk huh? about project 17 what yeah what you got going on with project 17 yeah yeah project 17 so it, you know once i was you know designated you know one of the 17 young leaders uh -huh. you know i actually didn't even know what the sdgs are so they're they're, they're called the sustainable development goals yeah. right and there are these 17 things that the un's like yo we have to do this by 2030 mm -hmm. right so if you look at the goals these 17 things that i'm talking about you know you'll see and you oh you see clean energy is goal seven everyone needs access to energy which I was technically hidden because I'm getting the world plugged in with music. Right, right. And then there's one called climate action. Now, everybody talks about climate action, climate change. That's just one goal. That's goal 13, right? There's other ones like no poverty. And we know which Tech 9 now is going to mm -hmm. do a song. And, and all these other goals, uh, water, clean. Everyone needs clean water. Everyone needs food. Right. So I looked at the goals. It took me about 30 seconds. I was like, what am I going to do? And I was like, got it. Music's universal language, the vehicle. Right. This is what we'll do. We'll do the world's first sustainable album. We'll do one sustainably, one song for each goal, each song in collaboration with one or more of Earth's biggest artists, mm -hmm. kind of like We Are the World, Michael Jackson. Right. But let's actually make impact. Let's not sing about it. Let's go on a tour, 17 dates, but we'll do it in the U.S. because mm -hmm. I'm the young leader of the U.S. So right. we, we got to get everybody in the U.S. plugged in. Mm -hmm. and, and let's make sure that those those tours and, and the music drives actual change and impact. Mm -hmm. Like like when the show's over or after you, the viewer, whoever's listening, buys the record or heck, once you stream it on Spotify 10 times, you can look up and say, wow, that's how many kids I fed today. Right. Oh, that's how many people I helped get water. Mm -hmm. So that's what the project is, mm -hmm. is the music, you know, empowers the actions to happen. So, you know, I have these part, you know, we, we're pulling in different partners in the different goal space, like a partner for, you know, multiple partners that get people food in the food goal. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have the song that's maybe like Stevie Wonder and Drake, but mm -hmm. the song raises money to empower those partners to mm -hmm. get people food. Mm -hmm. And then the tour date, you know, has a legacy project that's a huge food project, mm -hmm. you know. So now the, the the tour and your ticket, you know, just made the impact happen. Trying to make that as simple as possible, that's the project. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah, hope man. that helped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting yeah. better at breaking it down because, man, yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, and, and, it, and it should, I mean, you know, it should be simple. I mean, I mean, putting it together, I mean, obviously doing a tour and, and the music and all that is is a process. But the message needs to be simple: that we have got to save the world, and uh, you know your 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 exploits now and what you're doing. I mean, you're getting to come across a lot of people, a lot of famous people, and and just you know getting your word out, and uh, you know it's it's pretty impressive for a young man from the Ivanhoe community in Kansas yeah. City. <laughs> just. <laughs> Just out here from Kansas, like, you know, like, it, it, I mean, it's a perfect example. Like, I mean, obviously, I'm in this, this beautiful studio um, in the middle of Kansas. Yeah. No. But Missouri. Missouri. We're in, we're in Missouri. Yeah, we're in Brian's me, studio in Missouri. Don't put me across the state line, man. <laughs> Nothing against Kansas, but say, you know. But I have that belief that it doesn't matter, you know, what your age, what your shoe size is, what, you know, what you've been through, whether you're a company, whether you're, right. you're a charity or an influencer on social media, you're right. a TikToker, you know, we all can can be outlets and, and we can take an action, mm -hmm. you know, we can we can power real change right. and we can do it with our passion. I actually think change comes from passion. I think if you, you know, you find your passion, your purpose, you know, I think that's where real change can come from. So, you know, for me, like my project, you know, people say, oh, well, you're the voice of the youth of America. You know, what does that mean? How are you, what are you going to speak? You know, and I'm like, no, you know, what I'm going to do is just empower everyone else. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what makes even what I'm doing with Brian so special in this, this rock album, you know, mm -hmm. you, you know, that's preluding uh, Project 17, because it's like, you know, the ability to, to reach other 
people through music you, through other exactly. genres through country through through rock through right. you know, 70s 80s style music is is pivotal uh to to the step of, of getting the world plugged in mm -hmm. well yeah and, and and you know let's kind of talk about that too i mean your your experience with brian here and and uh you know how you met and through the harlan song network and what what is transforming from that experience which fits right into your goals of of using music to uh to bring the world together i mean it's it's an incredible i mean you i mean you guys truly are the poster child of our of our mission uh, of the heartland uh, oh. song network it's so know? like i mean the, the, man, the heartland song network brought us together and i mean but that was the thing is like there's so much synergy there in the sense of like what heartland's trying to do you know bringing people together is the same mission and goal i have mm -hmm. and then i mean you guys literally brought us together what do you think bro i mean that this is a good question for you no man it, <laughs> there's a like we were talking about earlier there's there are a lot of people like me out there that have a lot of stuff to say musically you know lyrically whatever but finding somebody to get together with and pull it for me pulling it into this decade because i'm kind of rooted in some in some more classic rock and and country and and things but it's been really good and it's really important because we're making some interesting music it's not just rock and roll music more genres yeah totally i mean i'm very i'm very much a multiple personality a disorder musician because see you heard that country has more country things some of the stuff's more rock some stuff's a little more pop but when them when we get together it changes even more and i mean to preface and i hope yeah and i hope you got time on there we we didn't get together originally physically like no. i mean the how it got together i think danny you called me right mm -hmm. and, and and pitched me the idea of being in this song network which anything with collaboration and bringing people together is a heck yes for me i don't know how you got reached out but we got started and made music without ever meeting like 90 percent of these records we put together kind of without meeting no huh? we went, this is like our the the first one time. was like from, from I, I told danny that that brandon uh brandon draper came by you know he's i'm loaning him some stuff and we stood and talked in the driveway and he told me about heartland song network yeah you know, like, he said you should go check that out so i really went, cool thing and i seriously yeah and i cool. literally <laughs> went in and got on my laptop and i'm looking at it going oh they're having a let me say they're having a, a covid song collaboration challenge or thing and i was like okay let's do that and then they sent me a y young i'm like oh, who's a y young i wonder huh? I go, huh? well that's this is a weird match is this and i, I emailed him i went are you sure that you want because huh? i mean i so anyway yeah i you and i got together yeah man remotely we and, got together on email that's what email, we got together like well i got this, this is, People like, will look yeah. back and remember the days like, oh, yeah, I remember. It was just Zoom. That's how we met. Yeah. You know? <laughs> no, this was like, like email and go, I got this song and you know, I had some, I sent him some stuff, links to some songs. And there was one that he's like, oh, I really like this guitar riff. Okay. That was the start. So of, that was the start of, that was mm -hmm. the start of a, that one song. We just took a guitar riff that was cool and transplanted it into another song. Mm -hmm. And some of these other ones, I had a bunch of songs written. I mean, just instrumental things with melodies, some melodies, but yeah, some of them have been, most of them have gone, undergone <laughs> some transformative, some transformative, Wait. some of them are like the the red, white, and blue thing. Yeah, we, Musically, we've had our battles on the changes. The way it was. It, Cause I, I bring a huge wave of change. Like, like, so it's like, he's got his whole thing and I've got my whole thing. And we're like, we're like, we're, 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 we're getting it together. Oh yeah. I'll say, I'll, let me say my comment. Let me say with Heartland is it was it was one of the first times in about I'd probably say six years that I was actually genuinely excited about something coming in the music space in Kansas City, mm -hmm. and I thought, oh shoot, this is like genuinely trying to bring people together in a more of an unbiased, un un you know very like hey let's let's do this let's let's do this regardless mm -hmm. of uh other 
things that sometimes halt people from bringing right, things together. Right. I love that. I was like, oh, shoot, this is something you have to be a part of. Yeah. Yeah. How many songs has it got on it? I mean, um, when did... It's got about a dozen. We're maybe. right on 12. Yeah. We went yeah. from, from a one song collaboration idea to like, you know, honestly making a friendship and then turning into... Well, it's really funny though, because yeah. I'd send, I started out, you know, we, we did the first song and went, wow, that went, that went better than we thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was well received. And I got, I sent him a couple things. Mm -hmm. And he's like, there for a while, I was like, I send you something uh, every, every couple days. Yeah. There's was. stuff coming. And he go, he's sending me voice memos back going, oh, I got a great idea for that. Here's, the, here's the hook, you know. And, so yeah, we were pretty soon art, we got like man. 10 songs. Yeah. But it's the thing is that the obstacle in all this was COVID and being able to be together. We were we worked over Zoom and FaceTime. Right. Yeah. But it it's it is so uh, not the same as right. being in the room with somebody, right. especially especially when you have a natural energy resource uh, like <laughs> yeah. like, <laughs> like this. I mean seriously, yeah. it's it's really it really makes a difference when you vibe your musicians always vibe off one another right. and it's really hard to do that i have a right. friend in tasmania we've been writing i met through this pandemic and we wrote some songs together but it's 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 just really hard yeah. and so once we started you know got vaccinated and we're back mm -hmm. working in the studio it's like we're finding our we're finding a rhythm of working right. together right it, it's really yeah, stuff's been right. kind of So when, so when yeah. will the album be completed? And you, yeah. when are you thinking? But I'll say that we'll probably have, you know, it completely together on a demo format. I, I think within the next month. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I might be performing them, you know, come September. Mm -hmm. But as far as release, yeah, follow yeah. my story yeah. for now. Right. right the yeah. writing's yeah. coming. The writing is coming together. That's the part where you, you know, you start start going back and forth and you know you hook them you get the melody hooked up and you start writing the, you know getting lyrics and coming up with you know there's a good line but here's a better line you know and you the songs are hey that's actually what he's held with a lot because like pretty much how i make music is like all in my mind or like how you say is external so i mean i just like i'll hop on a mic and whether it's instrumental coming out of my mouth or the melody or the lyrics it just i just go you know, but he's actually really helped on a different level in the sense of like slowing down and like really evaluating mm -hmm. certain sections. It's actually working out tight because like I'll c come up with I'll always I always hit a melody and then he helps like zone in on like the sections and the the real words and ask the question yeah. that need to be asked. That's a, and we're fleshing out some like well, lyrically. I'm, I'm very whoa. chilled out and I write the way I write is is different i mean we do share this this thing of we will we will stream of consciousness right mm -hmm. and then then it's you know for me then i go i pull back and go okay now what's it about and start making sure that all makes sense and you know what i have a the core concept and him i'm like part of what i do main thing i've been trying to do is is go he says stuff just like everybody else and you go that was a gem you know, let's what mm -hmm. we got that. What is that? Mm -hmm. Let's see what that is. And that's mm -hmm. where it's been. You know, we go back and you know, and then that when we get the words kind of happening, it'll, it'll trigger something else for mm -hmm. him or for me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's we're mm -hmm. finding it. It's, it's really weird because his high energy. I'm I'm pretty chilled out. Mm -hmm. So that's it's so it works. Huh? It's starting to it's that starting to work, work a lot better. I mean, at right. first it was real awkward because I was trying. Yeah. You know, like I said, it's we're we're at opposite ends of the energy spectrum. Right, sure. As, as far as our approach to this thing goes, mm -hmm. but it's actually starting to prove to be very synergistic in that way. I mean, we're it's 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 doing this nice push mm -hmm. and pull thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think it's been dope, man. So so ay, what what uh, long term future? I mean, what what's your goal? Yeah. What are you What are you thinking? I know it's an interesting question. Like, how do you answer? Like, long term future, what is my goal? You know, when I started out, it was always to say hey to the world. Literally, mm -hmm. it was like, man, I'm going to say hey to the world and bring my city together and bring, you know, then, you know, I get, I'm getting older. I reflect on my parents who built the Avenue neighborhood, right. you know, and, and watch them change the city block by block. And I'm like, wow, you know, I'm kind of changing the world, like, country by country or city mm -hmm. by city. 
you know, your long term, like what? You know, n now you know this young leader, and it's like, okay, he's doing this project where he's he's bringing together the biggest companies, you know, the biggest artists, the biggest influencers, you know, together, you know, uh, to take an action together. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know, what does the future look like, man? And, you know, coming out of COVID, world's been real divisive and crazy. We've seen a lot. We've experienced a lot. You know, I, I, I think that, that I'm here to inspire uh, everyone to whether you're at home right now and you, you look, you glance down and you, you see, you know, an outlet on the wall. You know, you, you see because we're that's in every home in America and every mm -hmm. gym is an outlet, which is the logo of the battery tour. And I think if I can a couple of years from now, you know, people can recognize, well, wow, you know, I'm an outlet for change. Mm -hmm. Like, like I can make a difference, whether you're the, the K through 12, you know, in school, you know, seven year old or 10 year old who, you know, even turning the lights off can make a difference. Mm -hmm. Or you can, you know, take your bike to school versus driving and save on fuel. Or you can, you know, you can volunteer. Like I want people to realize that they can make a difference, that they can dream, uh, achieve their dreams and goals, that, that we're all outlets for change. And if I can get the whole world to come together and, and take one small step mm -hmm. at, at the same time, that's real change. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're, we're, we're going to do that. Very good. We're going to do Very that. Very good. And, and hopefully it'll it'll be sustainable. I mean, th th that happens a lot as, you know, you talk about the Michael Jackson, we are changing the world. It happens and then it it, it kind of loses its steam a little bit. And, it, and it's very important. And I and I truly believe you got the energy oh, to yeah. make it sustainable, you know, to keep and, that. And, and I learned from who inspired me. Uh -huh. That was a song. Eh, raised some money, did some stuff. Right. Well, we, we're creating, and I'm creating an impact engine. Right. We're creating a paradigm shift in the industry of music mm -hmm. or just in uh in innovation in general like, you know you, you're talking about you know people are trying to come out of covid and, and perform and i'm coming out to show people how to perform differently right also empowering artists you, right. you're talking about me empowering artists where it's like you know there's a there's an underlying message too of like do you need to wait on the gatekeeper to give you permission to perform on the stage right because you know, you could also power your own concert. Right. You can also just go do it. Yeah. You can go do what you love to do and make a difference with it. Like there's a there's a there's a whole lot uh, that, of change that I'm bringing, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, and I don't know if this should go on there. But just imagine the first ever Grammy performance powered by renewable energy. Right. Or what I'm talking about with T-Mobile, which is the first ever concert and arena powered 100 percent by renewable energy right already can happen tomorrow yeah. like we're we're going to i'm going to change the the you know you you there you know i'm working with like the uh i don't know if you guys know about like movie theaters and how they shoot movies mm -hmm. but you know i've already pulled in the coalition of whatever it's called with viacom and everything where you know we're going to help you know change the way films are shot sustainably it, this it's gonna be every it's gonna be a whole lot going on, mm -hmm. but uh, you know uh, mm -hmm. my project it looks on paper like the next two years is the next ten. Yeah. yeah, but it has to be twenty thirty is sure twenty thirty is the day. This yeah. is just the pilot. Yeah, yeah. When all this is done and, and the tour is over, that's that was just the first step. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you if you heard what what's coming, you'd be like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. huh? Well, I I always want to know from the artists what they think that we can do more of to help bring about that change you know to uh to make people embrace music as as essential and the artists that make it as essential and that it's that it it is an important factor in our lives no matter where we are what we do and uh so i'm just having comments thoughts, about man? that that's a that's a very very uh, tall mountain to climb yeah education i mean i don't i don't know how you truly reach in and i think some of the things that ay is doing there's got to be educating the artists but also getting them to get out and unite and and educate and empower to make those changes because the artists don't appreciate themselves fully i don't think mm -hmm. i think we we all gone through these things where we go, I got to play for scraps. Mm -hmm. I got to play for what I can get. And 
that doesn't lead us to the good place that we want to be. Right. So sell themselves short. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so people, we don't value ourselves enough. So how do I expect the public and the venues and whatever to value me if I'll just go in and do, mm -hmm. I'll go play the show for 50 bucks mm -hmm. and work for three or four hours mm -hmm. for, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, that's a, that's a big question. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, and, and I'm not sure I have, any. I like that answer. I, I, here's I, I'll answer. I always answer questions in an odd way, and I'll, I'll say this: like, so you know, being a young leader, I'm always speaking to the youth of America, and you know, it's, I always do these conferences. And at, at the end of every conference, or like during it, I'll tell everyone, like, you know, hey, everyone, because everyone has a cell phone, everyone's an outlet, and everyone has a cell phone, and I'll tell them, you know, take take a picture of an outlet, like nearby on your wall, with your laptop plugged into, because everyone's zooming, and, and post that tag the battery tour, and, and I'll find, I'll get plugged in. You know, follow you, and it's it's kind of cool because sometimes you find those those uh the groups of people who are truly outlets, and they all get plugged into each other. And it's like we grow mm -hmm. the support network. It's nuts. And so if anyone's listening now, you know, you're like, and, and you know, the question is like, well, what, what can Heartland do for other artists? And I'm thinking to myself, like, what should happen, or what we should do is like, if you're an artist and you're listening right like they should plug into the Heart heartland network i mean grab your phone like mm -hmm. share about heartland mm -hmm. you know like get all of these artists and pe and yourself you know not just aware of heartland but plugged into it you know because you know you know the, the, the bigger we grow the army the more we power the battery to our heartland the more mm -hmm. change that you can create because mm -hmm. i can sit here and say oh dive into more chambers and work with the municipalities and there's mm -hmm. going to be some connections that i'm going to give you that hopefully really can power mm -hmm. heartland but you know it, you know it, we can come together as musicians and, and, and grow a supportive idea like this mm -hmm. and benefit from it as well. Yeah. It's the mutually beneficial thought process that Kansas City needs more of. Mm -hmm. It's understanding that picking up your brother and us growing together grows you. It doesn't halt you from growing because, you know, oh, well, I gave this guy my contacts or I, I connected him here. Let, let's let's grow this together. So I, I'll say all that to say that if you're listening and you're an artist or you're creative, share the Heartland Network. Mm -hmm. That's your first step of being an outlet. Yeah. Ah, oh, then, then yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see what step two yeah. is. Yeah, right, right, right. right. <laughs> well, with that, I just wanted to say thank you both. I, uh, this has been great. I, I've enjoyed spending time with you two before and during the interview and, and talking all we've talked about. I mean, this is this is what it's going to take for us to build that that army that you talk about. So, again, thank you and uh, stay in touch and keep collaborating. That's all I can say. Thanks, Danny, and thanks thanks to Heartland too. Okay. It's okay, it's alright. I got something that you go like. It's okay, it's alright. I got something that you go like. And if you want to learn more about the Heartland Song Network, go to heartlandsongnetwork.org and you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.